Good morning. Here we are on the Razorback. Walking out to meet up with Janet and Tully who walked out last night and camped overnight. Federation hut underneath the peak of Mount Feathertop. Of course there'll be lots of what nising going on here on my way out. But sun's up. A few people getting around. Let's see what we can find. The Razorback Walk is a very well-known walk in the Victorian high country which traverses a high alpine ridge out to the second tallest peak in Victoria, Mount Feathertop at 1922 metres. The walk starts from the Great Alpine Road and stretches out 11 kilometres along the ridge line and reaching Feathertop. So return distance is 22 kilometres. You can do it in several different ways. You can also access the Razorback from Harrietville via Tobias Gap or Champion Spur Track or even the Bonacord Track or even on the other side from the Dimatina Horse Yards on the Dimatina Spur Walking Track. Get a branch off here. It's a lower path. Path on the rear. Lots of missing along here. Hill of Selmissia in flower. Beautiful. It's a nice colour form. The area Frosty Eye, also known as the Bogon Daisy Bush, is a beautiful low shrub, 40 to 80 centimetres high, branchlets densely covered by stellate hairs. The leaves are alternate, subsessile, obovate, and 30 by 13 mil in dimensions at their larger size. Green or grey green above with mid dense stellate hairs, and grey white and densely stellate tomentose hairs below. The capitula is 25 to 50 millimetres in diameter, solitary uh, to a few terminating branches on peduncles mostly 3 to 10 centimetres in length. There's ray florets 30 to 80, mauve to pink in colour, and disc florets 40 to 100, and the typical yellow daisy colour. Flowering between January and March, this plant is endemic to Victoria and confined to heathland, grassland and eucalyptus passiflora woodland on the Bogon High Plains and the surrounding near peaks like Mount Hotham, Mount Locke, Mount Feathertop and Bogon and the other areas in this vicinity. If I had a top 10 list of plants this would definitely be up there amongst them probably even within the top five it is an absolutely outstanding plant and it's such a lovely thing to see when it's flaring en masse in the high country. Stylidium en masse. It's back there. On the area, frosty eye, the bogon daisy bush is in abundance everywhere. Just not in this shot, but. This looks like microcerus. The yeah, daisy, I think. Oh, there's heaps of it here, too. Whole hillside's dotted with it. Brachycombs, stylidiums, snow gums. Oretes, lancifolius, or lancifolia? Lancifolius, I think. 
Expedia. And heaps of other species. More patches of sun is here. Oh, this is a nice patch here. This is one of the trigger plants, Stylidium armeria subspecies armeria. The leaves can be 8 to 40 centimetres in length and up to 15 millimetres wide. It has an inflorescence that can be 8 to 75 centimetres in length with 15 to 100 flowers. So quite a venerable plant. The flowers are normally deep pink to magenta. Occasionally they can be white or a pale pink. This can be seen flowering between August and February. It is quite widespread across Victoria. But in the subalpine areas, it's normally found in snow gum woodlands, and it is very pretty when it's in flower. Right ahead, we've got the hillside of Selmissia. Those little white dots. Selmissia costiniana is one of the beautiful Selmissias or snow daisies that can be seen in the Australian Alps. This one has leaves that are narrowly oblanceolate to narrowly elliptic or linear. 4 to 18 centimetres long and 2 to 8 mil wide, normally green to grey green above and silvery greyish underneath. It has a flowering scape that gets to between 8 and 30 centimetres high, ending in a capitulum which is 3 to 5 centimetres in diameter. It has white ligules which are about 12 to 16 mil in length and the typical yellow daisy flowers in the middle. This outstanding Salmicia can be seen in the Victorian Alps and the New South Wales Alps. It's locally common in alpine or higher subalpine tracks and forming extensive carpets. It can also be found in open heathlands, herb fields, grasslands and in drainage valleys that are cold and along gravelly stream banks. This is another outstanding plant that looks fantastic when it's in full flower. Ozothamnus secundiflorus, the Cascade Everlasting, is a shrub to 2 metres tall. It has leaves that are oblong 10 to 35 mil in length and 1.5 to 3.5 mil wide, grey green above and densely white cottony beneath. Flowers are a capitula of 20 to 45, white in colour and can be seen flowering between December and January. This shrub can be seen in the Victorian Alps, also New South Wales and the ACT. It occurs in alpine heaths that are dry and snow gum woodlands, typically amongst rocks and it can be quite dominant locally. On a side note, the genus Ozothamnus can be found in the Asteraceae family and within it there are 53 species which occur in Australia, New Zealand and New Caledonia with about 44 of those being endemic to Australia. Here we are, meeting back up with a 
main feather top trail in a minute. It's an easier, nice wall level route around the side, this little section. Particularly if you're carrying a heavy pack or something. Be a little bit more pleasant. The leafy daisy, the Brachisco rigidula, is a sprawling herb or subshrub to 30 centimetres high, leaves core line, obovate in outline and up to 2.5 centimetres in length, they are pinnately divided with several lobes. The flowers have ligules that are 7 to 13 mil in length and are white or mauve in colour and with the typical yellow daisy centre. This plant can be seen in the Victorian Alps, also New South Wales and the ACT and Tasmania and found in rocky herb field and shrubland of alpine areas and down to subalpine grassland and open eucalypt forests. It is quite a stunning specimen. Now we've got the first serious ascent of the morning. Let's so we go. Now look, Euphrasia. The Razorback is a great 22 km walk. It can either be done as a day walk in and out, which normally takes between six and eight hours depending on your fitness, or it can be done as an overnight walk where you can walk out and stay at Federation Hut just below the summit of Mount Feathertop, summit there for sunrise and sunset or vice versa, and then walk out again the next day. It can also be incorporated into longer walks, but it certainly is a fantastic walk to do. It can be busy in the summer months and particularly the most common way to do it is in and out which is what most people do but uh, it's also great at any time of the year maybe not so much during the winter months unless you're prepared and experienced in those conditions autumn is also a fantastic time for this walk where you'll still see the zero chrysum subundulatum the alpine everlasting in flowering or just coming to the end of its flowering stage which always makes for a spectacular sight. So check it out if you get the time to be up in the high country and do it. It's a magnificent walk. Janet and Tully did the overnight version and I walked out to meet them the next morning. This was done early January 2024. It was a bit of a training hike. We were getting warmed up for some hikes that we're going to do in another country. Uh, more on those later. Well, I should say more on those in videos later on.
It's a lovely coloured one. Alpine Everlasting is another beautiful Ozothamnus, Ozothamnus alpinus. It is a compact shrub up to 1 to 1.5 metres high, usually lower in more exposed locations. It has leaves that are spreading, narrow elliptic 4 to 13 mil in length and 2 to 3 mil in width. The inflorescence is hemispherical, 18 to 24 mil in diameter, with a capitula 25 to 60 in total which is dull yellow to magenta, particularly when it's in bud, and then opens to white flowers. Quite a striking plant as the flowers are opening, as it gives a lovely two-tone effect. It flowers during February into March, and can be found in Victoria, New South Wales, and the ACT. It's restricted to the higher mountains of the state, particularly Mount Bogon, Feathertop, Loch, and Hotham, and it occurs in open and closed heaths and shrubland. It is quite an outstanding shrub and well worth having a look at. Haven't come too far, too many things to look at. Another plant with the common name of Alpine Everlasting, which is a little confusing as Ozothamnus alpinus is known as Alpine Everlasting as well. Yet one cannot confuse the two as this Alpine Everlasting, Xerochrysum subangulatum, is quite different. It is a lovely perennial herb, 5 to 45 centimetres in height. The leaves are normally crowded at the base and it ends in a solitary capitula, which is terminal and 2 to 5 centimetres in diameter. It has involucral bracts, which are yellow to gold, with the outer often being brown and it has yellow florets in the middle. This is a stunning plant which can be in flower from January to March. Even beyond you can see these flower heads still staying on the plant, which obviously gives us its common name as Alpine Everlasting. It's quite common in moist alpine herb fields and grasslands and can sometimes form quite extensive colonies. It is found in the Victorian Alps, the New South Wales Alps, the ACT and Tasmania. Quite a lovely alpine plant. Cirrochrysum is a genus of plants that is found in the Asteraceae family. There are more than 13 species which are all endemic to Australia and there are some that are still yet to be described. Craspedia gracilis, also known as the billy button, although a whole group of craspedias are called billy buttons. This is a lovely alpine herb. It has flowering scapes 8 to 65 centimetres in high. The leaves are mainly basal, linear to narrow spatulate, 5 to 20 centimetres long and 5 to 20 millimetres wide. The top of the leaf is silvery with dense, long and repressed hairs, grey green beneath with spare suppressed hairs giving the plant an overall silvery appearance. The flowering scape is cream to red in colour and ending with a inflorescence which is yellow, spherical to hemispherical, 1 to 2.5 centimetres wide and it contains 25 to 100 capitula. 
This lovely plant can be seen flowering across the summer months in the Alpine country of the Victorian Alps, uh, the New South Wales Alps and Tasmania. It is locally common among grasses on creek flats in the Alps and subalps and bordering sphagnum moss beds and occasionally in eucalypt woodland. Quite a very showy and floriferous plant. Look what I found in the park in the dark. Hey? Eh? We've seen 51 people, including you. It's yeah, mate. Good. Good. Do you want your walking sticks? No. no. Dilithium. Look down on your left. The little purple spires. Sorry? Goudinia heteraceae, subspecies alpestris, is a lovely ground cover that can form extensive mats. The stems are prostrate and they usually root at the nodes. The leaves are broad, ovate to orbicular. One to three centimetres long by five to 25 millimetres wide. The flowers are yellow and can be seen during November to April. It is found in drier subalpine grasslands and snow gum woodlands in the Victorian high country and also New South Wales and the ACT. Brachyscome spatulata, as the name would suggest, it has leaves that are spatulate to oblanchulate. They are normally rosetted at the base, but it does have some corline leaves. They are 1.7 to 11 centimetres in length and up to 30 mils in width, and usually have teeth or lobes somewhat rounded at the end. The flowers contain ligules, which are 10 to 16 millimetres in length and are mauve or blue and with a disc claret of yellow flowers. This can be seen flowering over the summer months in the Victorian Alps and also in New South Wales and the ACT and Tasmania. 
It's mostly found in subalpine and alpine woodland, heathland and grasslands, often in rocky areas. It is rare in lowlands, but can be seen where it's associated with heathy woodland on granitic soils. This is quite an outstanding species of brachycomb, which puts on a show, that's for sure. Quite pretty through here, but also thamnus, all the area frosty eye, stoliniums, standard terraxium, obviously that's invaded the whole world. Podolobium alpestri, also known as the alpine shaggy pea, is a procumbent or ascending shrub which gets to about 1.3 metres tall. Leaves are opposite or in irregular whorls of three, broad oblong to obovate, up to 5 centimetres long by 1.5 centimetres wide. The inflorescence is a few flowered terminal or axillary raceme. Flowers with a corolla being orange yellow sometimes with red markings this can be seen flowering between november and february it is found in the victorian alps new south wales and the act mostly confined to montane and subalpine parts of the high country Nearly there, Kelly. Okay. 
comes a legend. Razorback finish for this pair. Can we get a high five? No. Push you over. Well guys, that's about it for this video. As always, I do really appreciate your support, so please feel free to leave a like, comment and even subscribe, and that way you will keep up to date of all the latest happenings on this channel. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.